beauty bosses so today um what i want to discuss is pricing and charging your work i see a lot of conversations inside of the braiding groups that i'm in and um, a lot of people are struggling with charging their braid charging their worth and then even beyond that um being able to retain clientele now mind you my specialty is braiding protective styling and braiding and I can tell you for sure that protective styling is an industry or a niche in the industry that is a necessity. It's a necessity because with more of us being natural, and when I say us, I mean more African-American women being natural. First of all, they don't know. It's not common knowledge how to, we don't know naturally how to care for our hair. After years of being conditioned with relaxers and just that being the norm, transition into natural hair is definitely a learning process and there's a huge learning curve associated with it. Most people just kind of figure it out as they go. They're like, well, you know, I just kind of play around with products and figure it out. But for the most part, most people don't know what to do with their hair. And the products that are on the shelf inside of the stores are not always the best products for people, but they cost 15 to $30. So it is a costly process to maintain your natural hair. So that is how a braider, who is not just a braider, if you are a healthy hair specialist, which in order to do this, you would have to be either in a state that does not require licensure and then come to somewhere like the DVA Boss Lab Academy and learn how to shampoo properly and how to sanitize and how to do the customer service and all the soft skills that are essential to attracting quality clientele, caring for them properly when they're in your chair and then retaining them as a client that comes back. Or you would need to be a licensed cosmetologist. There are only 20 states that don't require a license and my state just happens to be one of them. However, I am a licensed cosmetologist. Um, outside of that, there are 30 states that do require you to have a license of some sort, even if it's just like a natural hair certification but that will enable you to braid in the state, but I really encourage going to get the full cosmetology license so that you're able to perform the full hair care services and you know how to do a trim and how to do a blowout when it's time for a lift check and things like that. But um, that is what, that's what enables you to charge more. I don't just charge more for the health of it just because I want to. I charge that way because I'm credentialed and I'm qualified to do so. And my daily rate is just based off I own a salon. It's based off, I'm not getting out the bed to do anything. Like I haven't done hair for 150 since high school. I was in high school charging 150, not providing hair, not shampooing because we had relaxers back then. And I didn't know how to shampoo. But ever since I learned how to shampoo in 2012, I have never not shampooed a client since 2012. And I provide shampoo treatment, optional trim, because I went back to beauty school, learned how to trim. Um, so yeah, I do a full service experience. And with 13 years of doing that, on top of now being a licensed cosmetologist, also a healthy hair specialist, I'm not going to charge anything less than, the lowest I will go in a lot of circumstances is 300. But let's be real, I've done free hair before for promotional purposes. And sometimes depending on how I'm feeling that day, I might do somebody here for 275 to their butt, just because I've done free hair before and it doesn't really matter to me. I look at it as the person that sees you doesn't know that you didn't pay $500 for your braids. So when they come to my site to book, they're gonna assume that you paid the $500 because that's the length that you have is butt length braids in their red or whatever color they are, you know, and they're gonna want that same look. So they're gonna be willing to pay because the social proof is there. When they go to look at my reviews, every review was an extensive in-depth review that's like, oh, it was awesome. She shampooed my hair, she blow dried it, she cared for it. She's so knowledgeable, she knows what she's talking about. I'm seeing results. Those are, that's pretty much the use. So when people go to research me, they see why I charge the price that I charge in comparison to my competitors that may charge the same price as me and not do half of the work that I do. So that's one thing that goes into the pricing. So that's what we'll do really quickly is a quick overview of Bag Chasing 101. And the objective of this course is to turn training into profit. Establish a winning brand to earn your way to six figures and beyond. So the Boss Lab Academy and the DVA Slay Studio Salon are a new concept. I came up with it because I've taught several one-on-one -on -one classes and I've seen 
the students either go on to fly and succeed because they really got it and they were that ambitious or it took them a while to actually get started with it and they kind of put it to the side on the back burner and never really perfected the skill and then i've seen um one person that didn't have the ability in any way or capacity to perfect their skill set so um with that being said it made me want to create a place that made sense i didn't like the fact that i didn't like the idea of charging someone 500 dollars for a braiding class and then they leave and walk away still not feeling competent in the skill set and still not able to make money off it because if you're not if you're not pristine with your skill you're not going to make money <laughs> you will be out here scraping pennies asking for 80 dollars hairstyles and a hundred dollars or whatever you could get in desperation is not a good calling card so i created a place that was safe for building your skill set to a level of competency that allows you to present yourself as a competent professional a competent professional that knows what they're doing you have a portfolio behind you whether it's 15 mannequins that you completed and then you start to mix in clients as we progress through the program until you replace it completely with all clients. And you continue to work on mannequins if you wanna do something creative of, or see how I just made this braided wig here. That is what I would recommend once you get past the point where you perfected the skill set, start making braided wigs because you can sell them and it's not a mannequin. So it's a different concept, it's close to being a human. So if you don't have a human, you know, for mannequin, you gotta take it out so you can do it again. With a wig, you just make it, set it to the side, make another one, keep making them and they just may sell because personally the wig idea works for me because my hair grows so fast when i wear braids that in two weeks i'm already looking like i need a touch up i didn't even get a full month or month and a half out of it before i started looking frizzy and like oh my goodness come on so yeah a braided wig is perfect for me because i can just i can disguise my hair and it looks brand new the whole time i'm wearing it it's no grow out so I think it's a beautiful alternative if you can maintain a wig. And I definitely recommend a closure and you can do it glueless, but I recommend a closure with a band on it over like a frontal or something like that. But either way, the name of the game is perfect your skill set, And it's hard to do that on your own when you don't know what to do. Like if you're overwhelmed by all the information that you just acquired from a class, you don't know what to do. You don't know where to start. That's where the boss lab comes into effect. So we have 90 day boot camps for intermediate people that if you get it the, the same day, like if you get it the day of your one-on-one -on -one class, then we'll just continue to perfect that skill set. If you still kind of lost on the one-on-one -on -one class, then we'll do a 120 day where we really dig into all the individual, individual pieces that build the whole so that you can really grasp the concept and then be able to master it. And then you can go into implementation, which takes you into the 90 days. But I really sat here and reverse engineered what made me successful with braiding because it was natural to me. I've been braiding on my dolls, but there are lots of people that want to get into the industry that don't didn't have a luxury of braiding on a doll or you just don't have a luxury of time because you need to make money now. So the best way to do that is with a 90 day training program. So the way that this is designed is for you to be able to make money in your second month. So it's like one month, 30 days of training where you're sitting here building your skill, perfecting it, um, but then the next month you're able to go ahead and service clients. Now I myself, I'm at 500 per service. I started at 275, well I started at 150 in high school, raised it to 275 when I got ready to go full time. Um, after being in the shop and you know having to adhere to their rules, I had to knock some money off my price. But then when I got to a place where I could do my own thing, I went to 275 and gradually went to 350 when I saw that there were other people charging more than me that were not shampooing the hair that did not have the amount of experience that i had that did not know how to protect the hair from excessive tension i'm like no way i got way more exp expertise and too many credentials to not be charging my work so that's what made me raise my price to the 300s and then once i enrolled in cosmetology school i was like yeah i'm only available in the evenings on weekends sorry there's an upcharge and it went to 400 and now it's like five, 600. But now I'm at a point where I'm transitioning out of this all together because I wouldn't go beyond $600 to charge someone for their hair because I do understand this is something you're doing for the maintenance of your hair and it needs to be affordable in order for you to continue to do it, which is why I get a lot of um, industry professionals, people who are set in their fields and they like to spoil themselves with luxury let's not forget that people do buy luxury handbags let's not forget that people do support these 
foreign designers all the time. Let's not forget that people drive foreign whips and they wanna do all of that. So do not be afraid to charge your price when it comes to hair, but just make sure that you can back up the price with the confidence, the competence, and the results to make it worth that money. I don't agree with people not skilled enough to charge that price, but you're charging that price. And when I say not skilled enough, I mean either the work doesn't look good or the client's hair is suffering or both. Um, so with that being said, while my prices are that high, I do have a reasonable price list that I use for the DVA Boss Lab Academy, which helps people to get familiar with what is a safe range for charging when you're doing a full service braiding situation. Um, when you're providing the hair and you're shampooing, this DVA Boss Lab price list is what you should pattern your prices after. This is fair. No one should be under 275 if they are providing the hair and shampoo, and that's just that. So if a client feels like they're better off, you know, not paying it, okay, don't, we're not the fit for you. Um, but do not undersell yourself. If you have taken the time to invest in yourself by teaching yourself, and then you also go on and enroll in the DVA Boss Lab Academy and pay for the training tuition, no ma'am, you are going to be charging <laughs> the prices on the Boss Lab paper because they're designed to set you up for success. So the way that this works is while you're still in training during that 90 day probationary period, you can service people here. You receive $15 an hour plus whatever tips the client gives you. And then once you feel competent enough and you have your own um, body of work, you get your own um, business card with your work on it that shows you as a stylist that services clients here. Or if you prefer to be a traveling braider or a traveling stylist, then we'll customize your cards to you. Um, however, I mean, you could do both, but however, when you work here, until you get to the point where you're self-sufficient and you can book people on your own, it's $15 an hour, plus you get tips. Now, when you are able to attract your own clientele and they book you through your own personal links, then you're able to pay, you're able to pay a daily rate of $65 to use the booth for the day, service your clients, and that's it. It's no obligation, no contract, none of that. Because the problem that I've, I've seen in dealing with um, different stylists that have come here and attempted to rent, or I've offered my tuition for free when trying to perfect the program, is if people don't have clientele, it makes no sense for them to have a booth. It makes no sense for them to have a contractual agreement to, to rent a booth from you for a long period of time. And it also makes no sense for them to hold a space even if there is no contract, if they have no clients. So it shouldn't work like that. It should be a daily rate, use any station that's available to you. And that is how the Boss Lab is set up. We have three stations here. Um, my station is available on the weekends because I, on the weekends and the evenings because now that my mother has passed, I do not have weekend and evening availability. However, I, I want to help the next generation of stylists do their thing, like, and I want to make it easier. Um, I was just reading through a group and reading the comments that were there. Now, they were talking about wigs and stuff like that. So that is why I transitioned into the medical space. That's why I went back to school, because I've been braiding for 13 years. In my state, you do not need a cosmetology license. However, the level of expertise that I have with working with natural hair would pretty much make me a quite a competent professional. However, I wanted more licenses behind my name, not to solidify and um, back my price up. I just wanted to um, give myself more credentials so I can move into another space. I enjoy making the wigs and I enjoy doing hair restoration and treating the follicles and the scalp. So that is why I've moved into a medical space because my time is worth money. And I just don't have the same time that I had when I was younger to dedicate towards braids. Now, I enjoyed making this braided wig. I definitely did. And that is something that I would definitely do just for fun because it's therapeutic for me to do these custom creations. This one is probably gonna be butt length when I put it on, but I'm a-okay with doing that. If somebody wants a braided wig, oh yeah, I can make you a braided wig all day, any day. Um, it's probably gonna be like 450, but the beauty of it is you don't have to get your hair done again. All you have to do is pay for the natural hair care, which is 150 but I am charging my worth because I know what I'm doing and I am rare. There are not many people in my niche that know how to take care of healthy hair. And that is why I opened this school because I'm not gonna be around forever and I can only service so many people. The other reason why I opened the DVA Boss Lab Academy is because 
Cosmetology School does not focus on natural hair care, nor does it focus on braiding. However, that is what most people are doing, natural hair care and braiding. So it's very necessary for there to be some standard of learning or some foundational platform or some place, some basis, some universal uniform place to get your information from. And who better than a licensed cosmetologist who's been braiding for 13 years and has built a successful five-star six-figure business from braiding. Honestly, I feel like that might be the cap that you could get to. If, I mean, unless you don't mind working 30 you know, every day of the week and you don't have kids or, you know, you want to exercise everything. But really, I feel like the key to earning more is just creating passive streams of income in addition to what you're doing. You don't want to work your fingers to the bone and kill yourself. I did that last year, my last year of beauty school. And when I tell you I had an accident that almost ended me dead, the whole front of my car got eaten off. And it, there were just a lot of things that resulted from the exhaustion of me hustling and grinding. So you definitely don't want to put yourself in a place where you have to service 30 people just to make $5,000 for the month. If you have the skill set and you're clean and you're doing your shampoos and treatments and you're providing hair, you definitely need to be charging a rate that is sufficient and reflects your competency in the field. So. If